Hello everyone, my name is Brett Stein. I am a real estate agent in the city of Toronto and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. I wanted to come on here to talk about my entry into real estate, my journey before I got to where I am, which as we stand is three and a half years in the industry, 40 plus transactions a year, uh, doing a lot of business, working with a lot of awesome clients um, at 26 years old, but it's been a journey. It has been a journey. I'll start off where a lot of young people's stories start off, I believe, and that's wanting to be a professional athlete. Um, I'm not ashamed to say that for a long period of time, I thought I was going to be the next Brett Favre, the next Tom Brady, the next Peyton Manning. I loved football and I wanted to be a professional football player and I wanted to do whatever it took to make that happen. I dreamt about it. I woke up. I thought about it while I was eating cereal. I thought about it all day long in school. And I came home and I threw footballs against the wall, pretending I was throwing touchdown passes. My doctor, son of a gun, told me I was going to be six feet, six foot one. My brother, Nick, is six feet. Lucky guy. Um, unfortunately, I only grew to the awesome height of five foot seven and a half on a good day um and you know those dreams quickly whittled away i did push it as far as i could you know i played high school football here in toronto i played club ball here in toronto broke some records did some awesome things created a lot of memories and i went out to the states to the university of puget sound shout out my loggers where i only stayed a year and you know with injury with uh, lack of confidence, with just also being realistic about my football career. Um, that's why I left. That's why I came back to Toronto. Um, and I mean, if I can just quickly talk about that. I'm five foot seven and a half, little Jewish kid from Toronto. Um, we get to camp on the first day. There's 10 quarterbacks. And um, I'm throwing, you know, we start warm up. You know, we're five yards apart. So we're throwing five yards apart. That I can do. 10 yards apart, yeah, no problem. 20 yards apart, 30 yards apart. Next thing you know, we're throwing footballs back and forth 50 yards apart. And, and I'm throwing it back and forth with a six foot five, 220 pound guy who is just flicking his wrist. And it's just <whistles> the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Falls in my arms. And then with little my, mini mouse over here, mighty mouse with every ounce of his might throwing the ball as far as I can to get it to the other side. And, and that's warm up. So by the time we actually came to play, my elbow was about the size of a softball and, you know, quickly realized this year, that year that, uh, wasn't for me and it wasn't a realistic goal. Um, but I tried and, you know, I think that's a, a huge part of who I am. It's trying and failing, trying and failing and trying and failing and, and going after every opportunity that's really ever come to me. Um, so I got back from the University of Puget Sound. So I came back, tried to finish school a little bit here in Toronto at Ryerson. Never, you know, wasn't in love with school. Um, never liked it. Uh, liked it because I was around my friends, but by the time I got back from school, my friends were all at London, um, in Waterloo, um, at Guelph, and I was here in Toronto with nothing to do. So I wouldn't go to class and I said, you know what, I'm dropping out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I didn't have much of a plan, but I knew that whatever heights I was going to reach as a professional was going to have nothing to do with my degree. Um, so that's why I dropped out with no plan. Uh, worked a little bit in insurance, dabbled in insurance, commercial insurance, um, and, uh, you know, dabbled a little bit in other sales. Eventually got to the point where I was sucked into a job um, I went to the interview and it was called we got you. and, uh, so I was like, Oh, consulting. That sounds awesome. Uh, I could be a consultant. I could consult on things and, uh, cool people. The guy who would have been my boss was this tall British guy who was athletic and was cool and you wanted to go have a beer with. So he sucked me right in. And next thing you know, I was on the corner of young and Dundas holding an iPad in a suit in the middle of winter 
and asking people to donate to save the children. I don't know if it was kids in Africa, kids who need help all around the world. And so, I mean, you learn this script front to back uh, about what you're selling. You know the product like the back of your hand and you're standing out there in the snow, in the rain, in the sun. And hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you doing today? Hey, can I bother you for a moment? Thousands of people. I mean, I would say probably hundreds of people a day um, and a hundred no's a day. So every single day, knowing that a hundred people I talked to were going to tell me, I don't know if I can swear, but they're going to tell me to fuck off. And that's what it was. It was, hi, how are you? Fuck off. You know, don't waste my time. Don't bother me. I learned more in that three month period selling charity than I learned about anything in my entire life. And I believe that I, I still take forward sales lessons that I learned from that period to now, right? To, I don't know, been five years later, um, rejection. I mean, it's one thing. Yeah. You know, you read the whole book on sales, you read the whole book on, um, different theories and, um, you know, different people's approaches on how to sell, but man, nothing really teaches you like rejection. And I was getting a hundred no's a day. So I was learning every single time somebody said no to me and I was like, okay, well, how can I get the next person to talk to me? How can I get the next person to talk to me? And once you get that little twinkle in their eye, that's when boom, your script comes in. Um, everything you know about the product comes in, your selling comes in. And I mean, it was an incredible learning experience. I don't want to go too deep into it. Um, but I mean, I was killing it there. I was killing it. I was selling, I was, you know, beating office records. I was selling more than anyone else in the office, uh, for a couple weeks. And just quickly, if I can say, I ended up going to Punta Cana with a couple of my buddies and I was sitting on the beach and this guy came up to me, um, with a, a whole box of sunglasses and he didn't speak English and he's sunglasses, sunglasses. And I looked down at the sunglasses and say, no, thank you. No, thank you. He walked away and I turned to my buddy, Josh, and I said, that's my fucking job. That is what I do in Toronto. I'm basically the guy at the beach. who's walking around with the necklaces, walking around with the bracelets, walking around with the sunglasses and begging for money. Now, of course it's for charity. It's for a good cause, but that's what I was. I was a beggar on the street. So as soon as I got back from Punta Cana, I knew this isn't what I wanted to get into. Ended up getting a call from at the time, a girl I was seeing her dad, and he was looking for someone, he's a real estate agent, and he was looking for someone to, you know, work on his database, work on clients that he hasn't reached out to in a while, you know, work on some marketing. And I jumped at the opportunity. I never thought I was gonna go into real estate. At this point, working with a real estate agent, I didn't think I was gonna be a real estate agent. My goal now was to, you know what, let's help real estate agents sell. And I did that for probably about a year. I helped him sell. I helped a few other brokerages that I was working with, a few other brokers. Um, I was doing their Facebook marketing, their social media marketing. I was calling their database. Um, I was basically the follow-up on their book of business. And my job was to set up appointments for these agents. So that's what I was doing. I was setting up appointments for agents. And fuck, we were getting so many appointments. I these agents were running around so busy because of what I was doing. And I was on a commission structure along with a tiny little salary and nobody was closing. Nobody could close. I was handing deals to these agents on a silver platter and nobody was closing. So eventually after working so hard and um, you know, I don't know what, what's that saying? Like a, you know, reaping, s reap what you sow. I was sowing the farm. I was whatever the corn wasn't growing. I, I wasn't seeing any results. There was no rain down from the heavens to, you know, uh, let my crops grow. And, um, I said, you know what? I could close these deals, but I can't close these deals unless I'm a real estate agent. So I got my real estate license started studying, took the classes, took the courses and 
uh, the exams as fast as humanly possible. I think I got it done in five months. It was an unbelievable starting point for me because I was able to learn the business before I got my license. I was able to start building a book of business before I got my license. I wasn't dealing in real estate, so I wasn't doing anything illegal, but I was talking to people. I wasn't talking to people about real estate. I wasn't talking to people about selling, about prices, about advice or anything like that. All I was doing was setting them up for other agents in the office, but, but I was learning a shitload. So by the time I got my license, I mean, I had already these people who I was going to set up other agents with appointments. I was setting them up for myself. So I was busy the second I got my license. I think, you know, by the time I really started selling, I did my first deal five days into the new year. Like I started being my own agent January of 2018. I did my first deal like on January 5th and uh, it just started snowballing from there. So I already had a database that I was building up with these different brokerages that I was working with, um, building up leads, learning ways to create these leads, learning ways to uh, follow up with these leads and then turn them into appointments, turn those appointments into contracts and turn those contracts into deals. You know, different from a lot of people's situations. I wasn't working with friends and family. I mean, at the time I'm a <clears throat> 23, 22 year old kid. My friends aren't buying. My family doesn't trust me to buy or sell. So I'm working with complete strangers that I'm finding off of Facebook <clears throat> off of Instagram, whatever it is, uh, through different marketing tactics. And, um, and uh, man, did, did I learn so much because it's one thing working with family, having another broker or another agent holding your hand through these deals, telling you everything, what to do. I didn't have anyone. I had people that I could come to for support, but I was doing these deals and I mean, nothing went wrong. We didn't have any legal issues, but I was basically doing these deals like on a fucking napkin at the bar, right? Like uh, there's a schedule A in our agreements. And now my schedule A's are filled head to toe with legal jargon, protecting me, protecting the buyer, protecting the seller, protecting both brokerages. I did deals where the schedule A was just a scribble of pencil of me saying this deal is firm. And they were deals and I got paid and the transactions closed. Um, but I learned so much. And I think that's kind of a point I wanted to get at is a lot of people have different ways of learning. I'm the kind of guy where you throw me in the fire and that's the best way that I learn. Sink or swim, make mistakes, learn from those mistakes. Don't make that mistake again. I mean, if you make the same mistake twice, you're not much of a learner, are you? If you call someone for help and he gives you help one time and then you have to call that person again for the exact same problem, you're not much of a learner, which is fine. People learn in different ways. Me, I learn from experience and I never wanted that help. A lot of agents of my contemporary people that I know, people that I know in the business who do, are doing great need that gray hair, need that broker holding their hand, walking them through the deal so that they have a crutch to lean on. Fuck the crutch. I never wanted a crutch. I wanted to learn on my own. I wanted to create my own style. And that's what I've done. I've created my own style completely unique to myself um, because I didn't really learn from any one agent. I didn't copy any one agent. I just kind of thought, okay, the goal here is do what's best for the client. The goal here is to buy this house. The goal here is to sell this house. How do I do that most effectively? And I created my own systems. I created my own ways of originating business and closing business. Um, and this was all really in my first year. You are who you think you are, right? That's something I say all the time. You are who you think you are. I talk to people three years older than me who are sitting down with me saying, well, how do I do it? Uh, I'm just getting in the business. What do I need to do? Um, I'm told that like, you know, I'll just probably do a few leases my first year. I go, stop right there. That's your problem. You think that, oh, it's okay. I'm just going to do a few leases my first year, or maybe I'll do one or two deals, or maybe my cousin will call me to sell his house. If that's your mentality, then that's going to be your results. I truly, truly believe that. When I got into the business, I thought to myself, I need to carry myself like I'm a 10-year vet. 
I need to, if, if people see I'm a rookie, then they're not going to want to work with me. They're not going to want to work with me unless I have a gray head, a gray haired guy beside me who has all the experience. If they're going to work with me and only me, they need to believe that I can make it happen. They need to believe that I can meet their expectations, that I can get to their goals and I can, um, you know, buy the house, sell the house, work with them to the best of their interest, to, to their best interest, sorry. And the only way you can do that is if you carry yourself like a veteran. If you walk around saying, I'm gonna kill this industry, I'm gonna help all my clients, I'm gonna do an amazing job for those clients and be so amazing that they're gonna refer me to all their friends and they're not gonna to wanna to stop talking about how awesome it was working with Brett. That was the goal. I mean, it's, it's not the most realistic goal ever because you're going to make mistakes. Um, not legal mistakes. Uh, I'm talking about mistakes in negotiating, um, mistakes in gaining your client's trust and keeping that trust. So I guess the main point here is that a lot of people ask about, well, how do you get into the business? How do you, what was your first year like? What should I expect? If you're trying to be a real estate agent and you, let's say you just got your license or you're just taking your last few exams, the number one piece of advice I would give you is to believe it in your soul. Wake up in the morning knowing that you know your shit. You know um, the real estate market. You are the best option for your clients, right? Because if you don't believe that, if you believe that anyone could do what you do, then the client's gonna see that and they're gonna see right through you. The client should look at you saying, I don't wanna work with anyone else. The great, listen, shit happens. Sometimes you lose clients, right? But some of my best clients were sending me listings that other agents were sending them because they trusted me and they're like, who cares? I just want Brett to be the one to show me this. I want Brett's opinion on this. I want Brett to do the negotiation. And slowly you get that respect and it builds and it builds and it builds. But that does come hand in hand with, you know, any experience in the, in any experienced agent in the business will tell you, go out, see as many homes as you can. Be constantly looking on the MLS. What, what did something list for? What did something sell for? What areas are selling for what prices? Uh, what types of houses? Is it detached, townhouses, condos, semis? Um, you have to educate yourself. So it's not just faking it all 100%, but it's just carrying yourself with a confidence. Um, carrying yourself with pride, a, a confidence that your clients can see, um, knowing when to shut up and listen and not talk too much and not bullshit and pretend you know what you're talking about, that's also huge. Uh, and I know I'm rambling a little bit right now, but I will say faking it till you make it is one thing. Carrying yourself with confidence is another. Bullshitting is completely different because there are facts and there are fiction. And when you're wrong, you're wrong which is why I always say to myself and to the agents that we work with, if you don't know something, say it. Be proud not to know that. Oh, you know, some of my agents, Cole, he's a new agent with me. I say to him, if you don't know anything, say, one sec, let me get Brett on the phone. That looks great. That looks great to the client, right? So knowing what you know, knowing what you don't know, carrying yourself with pride, um, you are who you think you are, um, and, uh, you know, I think that all goes hand in hand with having a first successful year in real estate. Is it going to be different for everyone? Yes. Was I lucky that I was working in the business before I got my license? Yes, of course I was. Was I lucky that I was building a business before I got my license? Yes, of course I was. What does that mean? It just means that in your first six months, you might not do a deal. You might just be massaging your circle of influence. You might just be reaching out to every single person you know. You might just be creating your mailing list. You might just be, you know, organizing your database. You might just be creating your marketing tools 
for the whole first six months. Yeah, you might do a couple leases. Maybe someone will call you. They need to buy something. Great. But in order to get your business to snowball, obviously you need to have that foundation, which I was able to create before I got my license. Um, and again, I think this video is going on way too long, but I'll say the foundation is you, your brand, who you are, you know, and, and I tried extremely hard, extremely hard. It was the most important thing in the world to me to be different. I saw all these other real estate agents and what they posted, who they were trying to be, what their goals were. And I said, I'm going to do things completely different. Uh, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be completely genuine. I want people to look at my profiles and be able to see who I am and be like, I want to work with that guy or, or not. Everybody doesn't like everybody. So by looking at my stuff, by my, at my profile, at my YouTube, at my TikTok, whatever, you're going to very quickly see, ah, this guy's not for me. Or you know what? This guy would be fucking fun to go out and see some sick ass houses with. And that's what it is. That's real estate. That is how I got in the business. Um, as you can see now, I'm extremely confident with what I do. I think I'm the best. I think I, and, and it's just the mindset that I have. I, I know there's so much more to learn. There's so many killer agents that are better than me at what I do. I know that. But I think I have the ability to continue to learn, uh, to continue to mature so that I could be up there, right? So that I could be cream of the crop. It's a lot like athletics. You know, when I was a kid, I used to have confidence through the roof. I thought I could put that ball anywhere on the field that I wanted to until I couldn't. And I, and I knew I couldn't. Um, and that's how I feel now. I feel that no matter what challenge I have and, or I'm coming up against, no matter what personality of the client I'm clashing with, um, or coming together with, I truly believe that I am the best person that that client could work with. And I think the only reason is to end it off is because I truly want nothing but the best for them. And I'm not thinking about the dollars and the cents for me. I'm not thinking about the commission. All I'm thinking about is my client's goals, how I can meet them, how I can exceed their expectations and how at the end of the day we can be popping a bottle of champagne and they can be saying, thank you, Brett. So thank you guys for hanging out. Um, I mean, if you stayed the whole time, congratulations. Thank you. Um, hopefully we'll have lots more content coming out soon. But for now, this was a discussion on how I got into real estate, my journey um, through before my real estate career to, you know, after the one year point. And, uh, you know, I hope to see a lot more of you guys soon. So thanks a lot.